Hello, 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 Filter Free America listeners. We have done it. We are back together again. I have missed you terribly, uh, horribly, but I'm so, I'm so happy that we've, uh, we've managed to uh, find each other once again here in the podcast world. Uh, I'm going to open this up with a little story, a little metaphoric story that's uh, very similar to uh, how uh, I release a podcast and then we disappear. We separate from each other after you listen and then we come back. Okay. Here's the story. Okay. When I was a little kid, uh, let's see, how old was I? Maybe seven years old, six, seven years old, something like that. I had a toy and it was called a Weeble Wobble. Uh, some of the older listeners, you may remember what those were. I don't know if they're still a thing now or not, but it was basically was a, a little collection of characters that were in the shape of eggs, right? Like a little, like a slightly smaller than a regular egg. Okay. Uh, but they each were a little character, right? And uh, the the commercial form was was something like Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down because it's like these little egg characters would they were weighted in such a way that they would tilt left and right or whatever, but they'd always stand up on end, right? Well, me being an, an idiot child, uh, I I put one of those Weeble wobbles in my mouth and I swallowed it. I, ca- I can't tell you if I remember if I attempted to swallow it on purpose, you know, like. I, like maybe I was practicing for like a circus act or something in my mind, or if I did it on accident. I'm pretty sure I did it on accident. I was just had it in my mouth for some reason. Oral fixation. Uh, you're welcome, ladies. Uh, and for some reason, I swallowed the weeble wobble. It traveled down my esophagus into my my stomach. Then, if I understand how biology works, it passed through my stomach into my intestines, both small and large intestines, and then eventually. You know, the next day, I had a somewhat painful bowel movement where I f- pushed the weeble wobble, weeble wobble character out of my my anus, my sphincter, my butthole, right? And ploop, ploop. You know, it sounds when you when you drop a turd in the water. Imagine a a a perfect egg shaped, slightly smaller than an egg piece of weighted plastic being pounced or pushed out of a six or seven year old's asshole into a toilet. Imagine that sound. Bloop. Right? There. And then he he survived his travel. My Weeble Wobble character did. And then he and I were reunited because of course I had my grandmother fish it out of the toilet, wash the uh, the poo off of it and keep it. And, and I kept it. Uh, and that's like us, right? Right? He's, my episodes of the Filter Free America podcast are, are like little weeble wobbles, right? That I record, right? And then instead of swallowing it though, I just I sh- shoot them out into the world, right? And then you guys digest them and they they go in through your ears and then they travel into your ears and somehow and somehow some way gets into your esophagus, into your stomach, into your large and small intestines and then and then they, I don't know if you knew this, but this is a fact. Uh, uh, episodes of the Filter Free America podcast after they after you've enjoyed them, they they come out of your in your poop. They do that. They come out of your poop hole. Yeah. And that's kind of what it is, right? That's that's kind of the similar to the same thing. Okay. That's a it's a it's a weird comparison, but that's what I had on my mind and I tell you, I don't I don't practice this shit. I just start talking and fucking weeble wobbles are right there. All right. Look, uh I've been back uh behind on it. I have put a new episode in a couple weeks uh for a few reasons. Uh number one, last month I gave you a seven episodes. Seven high quality uh, episodes of the Filter Free America podcast. So that's, you know, way more than I normally do per month. So I was technically ahead. Two, uh, busy with some job stuff, busy with some uh, my dog dying stuff, and I just had to take a break and, sit a, and, and get back to, you know, to my, myself and my headspace and things like that. But, so f- I apologize nonetheless, and uh, definitely plan to make it up to you. And again, as regular listeners know, my idea is just to record as many as I can and release them as, as, as fast as possible. I'm not trying to time out any specific release timing and things like that or what have you. I'm just doing them as I get them, right? That's the best I can do. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Uh, All right. I had a burp. Um, and also, the last episode, uh, my interview with uh, former illegal immigrant Maria, 
was a fantastic episode. Fantastic. Not only was it a, a tremendously powerful story, it was very entertaining and uh, definitely one that I, I don't mind having to be at the top of the uh, list of episodes uh, for a couple weeks because I definitely wanted as many people as possible to see that and to hear that, hear that story. And uh, I'm very proud of that episode. And if you haven't listened to that yet, please make time to do that. But regardless, here we are. We're back together. Uh, we will wobble free. You need some more Weeble Wobbles to uh, pass out of your anus. Uh, again, this is a really crazy metaphor, but I'm going to go with it. I'm not going to stop. Um, this episode is is an exciting episode. Okay, it's exciting for uh, a few reasons. Uh, number one is this is a fun episode. I don't think I... I felt like I haven't had... Well, all the episodes I enjoy doing, and, I, and, I, and I, 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 I like them. I don't have any complaints about any of the episodes that I've released. Some are obviously a little bit more uh, silly, entertaining, fun uh, than others. The Maria one uh, was a little, was a, was a powerful episode and there was some humor points in there, but it was a very serious topic, a very controversial topic. Uh, so that is what it is. And then you go back a little bit farther. There was some stories about sexual assault and some other stuff. It's been some heavy episodes, right? So I'm very happy to tell you right now that this episode is lightening it, lighting it up a little bit. Okay. It's going to get a little bit lighter, a little bit more fun. Still a, a an interesting topic and still one that could be could, uh, perceived as controversial. And there's definitely going to be some people that are going to hear this that are going to uh, <laughs> have um, hmm, interesting reactions to it. Uh, regardless, uh, it was a fun one to record. It was a very fun conversation. Uh, and there's lots of sex talk surrounding uh, a, a very open and honest conversation about my guest's adulterous relationship. Yeah, right. Yeah. And that's that in itself that should be that should be an interesting topic for you guys because uh it's not often that a lady uh will be so open and honest about her being uh unfaithful. And in this case she was unfaithful to a husband, right? And uh bless her heart, she came in, she was very very open, uh, answered all my questions, you know, I did a little pre-conversation with her, make sure I got the clearance to ask everything and she was uh, basically wide open, right? Uh, didn't want to change her name. Didn't want to use her exact name. Uh, so we're going to call her Claire in this op- episode, as of course the title has told you already. Uh, but, uh, she will be Claire for the episode. Okay. And, uh, this one's got a plot twist to it too. Not only are we talking about a cheating relationship, okay. Two people, two married people, uh, came together and, and cheated together and, and, uh, uh, it's, it's a little bit different, okay, because uh, uh, both parties involved, uh, and heads up to my libertarian friends, were libertarians. Uh, I don't know if she still is at the right now, but she was at the time. And the reason I point that out uh, is because the, the person she cheated with was a local libertarian figure, uh, and he's the, the male in the story, and... Uh, Let's just say he has a very, based on his actions, as they were told to me, disclaimer, 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 okay? He has a very questionable definition of what liberty is uh, when uh, talking about relationships. So that's enough of a tease on that right there. <laughs> this is a fun one, guys. I'm, 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 uh, this is going to be a good one. You're going to enjoy it. Uh, real fast, let me mention the uh, name of the sponsor. Simplewebsite.us, simplewebsite.us. One more time, simplewebsite.us. Now, if you're a regular listener, you absolutely know what they do. What do they do? This is what they do. They provide help for people who need help building websites using specifically the Squarespace website builder, right? Now, many people can do that on their own, no problem, right? I and many others like me are the exception. We are dummies, right? Like we can't figure out how to do anything on a computer, okay? And that's where Simple Website comes in. You contact Simple Website, you say, look, I want to use the Squarespace Website Builder. That's the most economical way to do it, but I would like you to do it for me. And these folks are experts at doing that. They have built hundreds of websites using uh, simplewebsite.us or using Squarespace. That's the name of their company. Uh, and they've mastered the tools that the uh, Squarespace provides. So they can do it, number one, better than most of us, and they can do it definitely more efficiently than most of us, right? You just call them up, make a deal with them, tell them what you want, and magic, you know, boom, 
Uh, you got a website, right? But don't think it's just for people who need all the handholding because it's not. Say you just need help with one little part of your website that you've already built or you want to improve an area like that, still go to simplewebsite.us because they'll do that for you too, right? They don't have to build your whole website. They'll just help you with the one you've already got built or a little small issue within your website, whatever. They'll take care of that, right? And lastly, if you don't want any help whatsoever, please go to simplewebsite.us and check out the free tips and tricks. Yes, they are so good at what they do, they're just going to give away part of their value, right? You will find tips and tricks on how to make your website building process easier and better at simplewebsite.us. Anything else I need to do? Oh yeah, Uh, as always, please rate and review this podcast. If you're listening to it on iTunes, uh, a five-star review, please, and a, a nice little written review be fantastic, or anywhere else, anywhere else that gives you like a star rating or a thumbs up or anything like that, wherever you're listening to it, please take time to do that. I really appreciate it. And also, uh, we are now on iHeartRadio, the iHeartRadio, uh, whatever it is, platform, I guess that's the word for it. I don't know, I'm not smart, right? Uh, Filter Free America is now available on there too. I don't know why it took me so long to get it there, but we are there now. So uh, there's that. Anything else? No, that's it. Uh, it's interest long enough as it is. Okay, so as always, we need to have a a, a hilarious or clever or uh, informative name for this episode. And uh, I, w- I went a little went a little alt on this one here. Man, maybe the alt's not the right word, but whatever. It's a little, it's a little uh, more obscure than <laughs> the previous episodes. Uh, so I've got two libertarian figures who uh, were cheating uh, together. Uh, outside of their their marriages. So I wanted to incorporate that a little bit. So here's the title I came up with. You ready for this? Porcupines poking parts in parking lots. Porcupines, you know, because that's one of the libertarian mascots. And the poking parts part, that's like sex. And then the parking lot part, uh, that comes out in the episode. So if you're smart, you probably already figured it out. But whatever. That's the name of the episode, right? You good with that? I'm good with that. Let's kick it off. Okay, here we go. This is the episode right here on Filter Free America. Porcupines poking parts in parking lots with Claire. Right here on Filter Free America. Let's go. All right. So why don't you start by telling me first, where did you meet Mr. X? I met him on Facebook. On Facebook. Weird, I know. I'm peeking already. I got myself too loud. (laughs) You met him on Facebook, right? Where yes. so many good things and bad things always start on Facebook. How did you meet him under what, what circumstance? So I was starting to get pretty politically active, and he was heading up a group of people who were organizing um, how to infiltrate the Republican Party at a certain state level, like a local level, and discussing things that we could do to try to get a certain candidate elected. Okay. I don't know. Can can I say Ron Paul? Yeah. 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 We were all Paul bots is what we were. I just assume that he listens. I don't know. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know what he does. If it's not a podcast with him on it, he's probably not going to listen. Never know. You're right. I don't, don't ever know. So that's how you get, you get, you start talking to him. You got to know him. Yeah. He was very enthusiastic, very energetic, very charismatic, very funny. Um, very good at planning and making sure those plans were executed efficiently. Okay. So this, he had a wide group of friends and they all liked him. We all had a really good time. He had a lot of things that you, you were attracted to. Yes. Personality wise, mm-hmm. ambition wise, yep. political wise, mm-hmm. um, physically appealing to you. Uh, his face was. His face was. <laughs> That's a good answer. He looked good in a suit. Okay. And he was, anytime I saw him, he was usually wearing a suit. Okay. Um, and then later on that, that stopped and he's just started wearing more casual stuff all the time, which didn't bother me. I'm not really superficial. Okay. Um, so when did you start having thoughts other than this is just a cool guy who's, you know, whatever. When did you start saying, well, you know. I'm married, but this guy is something else. What? What? Um, I don't think I started having those thoughts until he reached out to me. Okay. Um, because at the time he was kind of like 
a little version of a local celebrity. Everybody knew who he was. Everybody thought really highly of him. Um, tons of people were like surrounded him wherever he was. And it's like, oh, he's reaching out to me. And I'm like, wow, you know, it's, I was just in awe of this person. And I was very flattered by their attention. But prior to that, I'm like, he's married. I'm married. That's not going to happen. There's nothing there. So was it, was it blatant? Did he just like, Hey, you know, let's bang. Or was it, uh, no, it wasn't that directly. Um, he wanted to get me to know me as a person. He's, he's really smart. He knows how females work that way. You, you know, as you get them by the brain first and then the body will follow. Is that it? It is. So God there's the secret. Everybody knows now. Um, I thought it was all in the finger blast, you know, I was like. That doesn't hurt. Okay. Well, um, if you do it wrong, if it you do, Well, if you do it wrong and your nails are too long and it's, the technique is off, yes, you must be careful. It's delicate. But first you start with the brain. Okay. Get them by the emotions a little bit, make them feel like they're the only girl in the world. And right. then usually they're putty in your hands. All right. So that's that's what happened to me. And I was starved for attention, so it didn't take too much. So, and, and to not use this as an excuse, but what were you missing at home that maybe led to where this was, was going? I felt like my role had been reduced to that of a maid and a nanny, and that was it. Um, I don't even know if that's fair to say because I, I've seen a lot of uh, things on my screen where maids and nannies get plenty of physical attention from the man in the, in the Schwarzenegger house. household. <laughs> right. That happens quite a bit. Right. Apparently. So in that, that wasn't happening for me, but... Um, I worked opposite shifts as my husband at the time, and that's challenging enough as it is. But then there was no effort being made on his part at all. Um, we saw each other in passing, and he would call me when he got to work mm -hmm. um, to, just to let me know he made it there safe because half the time he'd leave, and I was worried because he wasn't keeping his eyes open walking out the door. I'm like, call me when you get there so I know you're safe. Right. And so that just became what he did. He would call me, and that was the extent of our affection i was lucky to get dick once a month okay um later on when we after we'd been separated for a while he told me there was a period of time where we went without for about eight months and i'm Jesus. like when was that and he's like that was after you had our third kid and you were so doped up on antidepressants you didn't want it i'm like well maybe that would have saved our marriage if i was just turned back into a zombie and i wouldn't have noticed i wasn't getting what i needed okay so um, but after that, it's like I took myself gradually off of them and all that stuff came back. And then it's like, I need, I need that. Right. Like, that's like, I tried to do counseling with him. Like I bought the love languages book. <laughs> so, what's the love language? I tried before anything bad happened, before I strayed, I, well, I feel like I exhausted everything I could think of to try and save what was a really troubled marriage. Okay. So I found out what my love languages were, and I tried to kind of figure out what his were and do them, and it still wasn't enough. My love language? Pig Latin. That's what mine is. <laughs> Oop and stay. <laughs> um day. I used to be able to speak Pig Latin pretty thoroughly. I was trying to say something funny, but I can't even do it now. I can't either. It's as bad as my Spanish now. Uh, no. So you're, you're married. You're, this is going on. It was there like a decision, you know what? I'm going to go bang Mr. X. What, what, how did that, how, so does, it started, how does that occur? Um, it started by... And I, and I guess I should, I should ask, with it, is it, did this start as a, as a physical relationship only and progressed into something else? Or was this like immediately this is, you wanted to be with this person? I immediately wanted to be with him. I don't know if it was like that for him, but I immediately wanted to be with him. As soon as I was getting the attention I wanted and felt like I deserved, I'm like, this is this is who I want to be with. Okay. So um, he invited me out to watch him sing karaoke. <laughs> He's good. He's got a really good voice, and it was really fun. And what then, was the first song you sang? Um, Sweet Child of Mine. <laughs> okay. And uh, he's got a very good voice. He's trained. He's a good singer. And so he kills when he does karaoke. He does really well. And um, the crowd got into it. It was it was a really good experience. And then afterwards, he like 
wanted to talk to me and so we sat in his truck and then we ended up making out and i let him see my boobs and that's how it started <laughs> like picture or did you show him no i showed him i'm like okay and i even asked him I'm like do you want to see my boobs he's like yes <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's, that's so that's so uh seventh grader it was you want to see what i got <laughs> I got a great rack. Here you go. Right. This is what I got. It's like, cause I felt like he had all this, all these wonderful attributes and I felt like, well, I have my body. So here it is. Right. So was it, was it from that point? Was it just zero to a 100? Was there any build yeah, up it was, at all? No, it was zero to a hundred. I mean, we didn't like have dick to vagina contact immediately, but it wasn't long after that. I always start with anal. That's always the best. You go there. Oh. <sighs> You're adventurous. You're adventurous. <laughs> That's bold. That's a bold move. That's a, I'm saving myself till marriage move. <laughs> uh, I don't want to get married over anal. <laughs> Seems like a horrible reason to get married. Um, was there was there a, a guilt factor at this time? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And what, what's going through your head guilt wise and, and how, how are you dealing with it or processing it or excusing it in your head? I'm excusing it by saying I'm not getting attention and I'm not technically sleeping with him yet, so this should be fine. But at the same time, I'm like, you're lying, you're hiding, you're you're leaving your kids for, you know, moments here and there. I'm like, I was never too far from home and my oldest was old enough to babysit. Okay. And I'm going to blame him. Yeah, you're old enough to babysit, so here I go. Um, No, that's terrible. <sighs> but We're humans, we all do terrible things. I know. I just, I felt like a bad mom and I felt like I was being super selfish and I was, I was being selfish, but I was also really good at beating myself up over it. But I justified it as like, I noticed I was more attentive to my husband after that. I was more attentive to my kids. I felt like I was becoming a better person because I was feeling like I was valued and appreciated. Okay. Not by my husband, so clearly. Get, so but getting what you needed yeah. reinvigorated you on the, you know, the domestic the stuff. Sleep. Yes, absolutely it did. Okay. Absolutely it did. I mean, it's a lesson to, to guys, I mean, myself included. It's like if your house isn't clean or you want your spouse, wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever yeah, to do. Yeah, your partner. You maybe just need to go cheat. Oh, wait, that wasn't. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Try it, that. Try it out. Try it out. Get a little stray dick, then re- just just appreciate what you have at home. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. It, I, I, cause whenever I talk to people, I always analyze myself in the process because I'm like, well, if they're if this is a failure for them, what am I doing wrong? It's that same thing. So I know I I do similar things. You you take people for granted, like mm-hmm. if they're there, you know, then like you just assume they're always going to be there, right? And it just beca- it's easier to do that, and and sometimes treating people well or treating people that they deserve to be treated. Uh, it, it takes energy. It does you, that you don't want to invest, which is that's I guess that's the core of the relationship. You know, if, to have a relationship, you have to have, be willing to put that energy forth, sacrifice your energy. Correct. Um, so was we have more. I don't want to get to the part we talked when he when he told you, but so how did how did this relationship going between you guys? What are you guys talking about? What are you guys planning, plotting as far as your guys' you and Mr. Rex's relationship? Mm-hmm. What's going on there? What's the So we're sending each other memes, making each other laugh all day. We're sending each other songs. We are flirting, um, talking about what we want to do to the other one sexually. Um, not that so much what as was he, what was he into? Like mostly boob play, honestly. It wasn't really? that ex- it's very we we're very vanilla. So this podcast is over. I wanted to. Okay. Well, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. No. Um, so, but it was like, we both felt like teenagers. Okay. That's what it boiled down to. And I blew them in a parking lot a few times. We had sex in a parking lot a few times. It was a lot of vehicular activity. Okay. Um, which limits you because I'm not a small person. He was not a small person either. And it's like, we don't drive Escalades clearly. So. Um, got creative with that. Okay. But uh, yeah. what did he say? Anything? Because you you told us what uh what you were missing. Mm-hmm. You know, and what was he telling you was his reasons for wanting to pull away from him? Because he was married. Right. No kids on his part. No but kids. He was married. He was married. Definitely married for a long time, over a decade. Well, and I thought they were okay. Like she's pretty. She's funny. I liked her. I met her in person. Mm-hmm. Um, I couldn't understand why he was attracted to me. But he said he 
never felt the attraction towards her that he felt with me almost immediately. Like he felt a connection with me, never felt connected to her. Um, as as somebody who, is, who has cheated, and by cheating I mean cheating, I've cheated where the, the person I was with didn't know, you know? Okay. Which is different. If they know and they're cool with it, that's... Yeah, I don't think I don't that's, that's the really same cheating. thing. I think that's called polyamory. Is that what it is? I think so. Okay. But I've cheated, like legit cheated. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I remember saying that. Like, that's a line. Like, it was in my case. I'm not saying that was for him. Maybe he it really, probably was. but Like, oh, maybe, you're everything that I don't have. Like, you're everything. Right. You know, oh, great. But so maybe, no, you him. Oh, maybe you legitimately felt like that, though. No, like, no? no, not at all. Okay. I just, well. I thought that, I, th I don't know, maybe it worked once. And I'm like, oh, this works. Let's keep going. There you go. Let's try this one again. Yeah. <laughs> Humans are horrible, right? I, you know, the only difference is we're all horrible. I just, right. some of us like to admit it and come to that realization. I, I I've done horrible it. shit. So have I. Yeah. Clearly. Okay. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> In the confessional so you, 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 with you, Father you, Vincent. You signed off on it and you get permission for me to dig. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> sure did. So you, you guys are both trying to, you know, come together now at this point or you, you, you plots of becoming a relationship? Is I that... wanted it to become a relationship. I think he was just having fun initially. And then... Um, I told him how I felt, and then he would tell me, like, oh, I'm into you, I'm into you, but he wouldn't say anything else, and I'm like, okay. And then he dropped, uh, like, an I love you on me, and I'm like, oh, crap, then this has to go somewhere. This has to you know, turn into something I have to leave then because I feel the same way about you. Is that a rule? I thought it was. Okay. I, I don't think it is anymore. I, I don't there's know. degrees of love, even there degrees are. within physical contact right. that you can love somebody but not love somebody to the same degree. I think it's comforting to hear somebody else say that because I've always felt like that. I'm like, I, I love a lot of people at varying degrees. Right. Like I have an ex-girlfriend who I love. Right. I love her. I always will love her. Because they got that spot in your heart and you're always right. going to care about them. I have several people like that. Right. I got plenty of ex-girlfriends I hate. I don't hate anybody. I don't hate like I want some bet like I just like you're a horrible person. Yeah. Like, more so than me. Like you're horrible is ways more than my horrible. Kind of yeah, thing. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, clearly, I feel that way about somebody. I don't hate him, right. but just knowing how into him I was and how I felt like, oh, I'm probably going to marry this guy. Now that thought disgusts me now. It's so repulsive to me. I can't, it's like I cannot imagine. And I'm so glad I did not get what I wanted because I wanted, I wanted to be with this guy pretty badly. That, that's one of my... I say favorite things, but I guess most interesting things about relationships is like the degree to how deep you are, you can, you can get with another human being. Mm -hmm. But then when you look back at it after the fact and the, the fires have been put out and right. you're, you're pulled away and you're like, how the fuck? I know. Like I've invested <laughs> years in, in like, again, I'm a horrible person to have, have been and try to trying to be better every day, right. but I've invested um, emotional Energy. currency and and the most worthless people on this planet, and it, it's just in looking and at the time it was like oh this is the right thing to do right this is everything that <laughs> feels fucking fucking fantastic. So, so I have a I have an aside that I did not mention earlier, <laughs> but um right. it, we were so like I felt like our connection was really deep, and so did he. And then he had me convinced like that we had a supernatural connection, and there were times. <laughs> There were times, that seriously, good. right? <laughs> no, it's vanilla. We're supposed to end this. Remember, <laughs> um, there were times where I'd be thinking about him and just like thinking about like the color of his eyes or something. I was particularly like just really appreciating about him. And then he would text or call me at that moment Whoa. and be like, oh, were you thinking about me? I'm like, yeah, I actually was. And then. Now, looking back, I'm like, I was thinking about that motherfucker 24-7. He could have called me any time, not when I was specifically focusing on him, but I was always thinking about him, and it would have it would have also been true. So now I'm like, well, that's stupid. But at the time, it was pretty cool. I'm like, wow, I can like really focus on him, and then he'll call me, or he'll know that I'm thinking about him. Like, we, we, we're on the same wavelength. Like, there's a some kind of connection there there's this is real you know that's what validated it for me, me being the skeptic that i'm that mm -hmm. just that just sounds like game to me and in, in fact but, like it's really good game yeah but because technically you're going to think about especially in the context of your yeah. guys relationship of being adulterous 
in its nature. Uh, you can't help for him to cross your mind <laughs> right? at one point. So technically, yeah, you're going to think about that but person all the like time. But what it's like at that moment when you're specifically thinking about them, like just concentrating hard, nothing else on your mind, and then bam, they contact you. It's like, it's really easy to be, to be manipulated and thinking like, wow, this we are meant to be. And I'm such a stupid, hopeless, idealistic, romantic anyway. That right. doesn't help. Okay. That Shit like that makes it even worse. Fair enough. That's a damn good line, though. You just so. Yeah. Were you thinking about me? I was thinking about you. <laughs> That's a oh, very well. good line. Well, I'm gonna very put that, tuck that one away. It's a good one. <laughs> so, uh, before we get to the to the you know meat and you, potatoes, the meat and potatoes of you know letting your your husband know what's going on, is everything good between you and him? You and Mister X is everything. Is there no negatives? Is there no red lights? Is right now, the, no, there are no red flags other than the fact that we're both married and doing this. Okay. But aside from that, I, he could have been Jesus in my eyes at that point. I've just, he could not have been a more perfect human for me. Well, if it was Jesus and you blew him in a parking lot, that kind of justifies it at that point. Then I mean, that, that would have also like counted as, as the blow. second and third coming of Christ, and that would have been great. <laughs> That's hilarious. Thank you. <laughs> It's kind of like holy water. Kind of. <laughs> kind of. Stickier. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Leaves an aftertaste. I don't know. So as we approach now, you telling your husband, and then when we'll find out how how his wife found out, what was the deciding factor? Was there a discussion between you and Mr. X? Did you guys say, hey, look, we need to let these people know? We need to, what's What was the decision process there? Um. I don't, I hesitate to call it a process. The whole thing was a hot mess. Okay. Um, we both wanted to be, to be together eventually. Like he's more patient. He's a, he's good at planning and plotting and putting the pieces where they need to go before, before anything actually happens. I'm more of a fly by the seat of my pants, impulsive kind of person. And I was having a lot of, um, guilt and, I hated living a double life. I just wanted to be with him out in the open. No more secrets, no more hiding, no, none of that. It was, it was exhausting for me. Okay. And so I told him I wanted to tell my husband, and I also wanted to tell his wife because he wasn't going to tell her. He didn't think that was a good idea at that point. He's like, well, we'll eventually tell them. I'm like, I'm, I need to get this off my chest. So I told my husband... Who what didn't. was his concerns about, about, did he give any justification for why it was a bad time or? He just said, like, things need to happen before we can get to that point. Like, I want to make sure this is in place and that is in place and we can start our life together before you get to that, we get to that point. Okay. So that was, and he's a planner. I'm not a planner. He's a planner. So okay. I, def I deferred to his judgment. Okay. So how long into this uh, relationship have is, is at this point is this a year is this that's really early it's probably only maybe a month or two oh, okay so things advance pretty fast oh yeah we went from zero to 100 miles an hour okay um when did they the decision come to to tell them um i just i just did it you just did it. i just did it when, knowing that he didn't want you to and... knowing that he didn't want me to okay because he did tell me, do what you got to do, what's best for you, and I'll deal with the fallout. I'm like, okay. Okay. So it, that's permission. It is. It is. He acknowledged is. there's potential fallout from your actions, and he right. knows that that's something that you may do. But I don't think he expected me to do it right away. Okay. And I did. I Like, we had that conversation, like, and then I did click, it, like, hours later. Down, <laughs> hours later is when I told my my now ex-husband. Okay. So let's, let's, let's explore that then. How did you do it? Did you do it in person? Did, how, did, how did you tell your husband? I told him in person. Okay. I sat him down on the couch. He was reading, and I told him I, there's something I need to talk to you about. And, you know, this was after we put the kids to bed. It was on a weekend. So I would have to deal with him. Did you do it on a Friday night or Saturday, or Sunday? I weekend? did it on a Saturday night. Kind of blow the week I'm up a little bit. Yeah. Though, so. I, really I always wait till Sunday for bad news. Like, That's... hey, by the way. Well, you have to go to work tomorrow, so you can't get too upset. <laughs> you thought case of the Mondays were bad before. <laughs> You're welcome. Let me tell you about this parking lot. Um, <laughs> this parking lot. Which parking lot? Right? Right. Which, which parking lot? was? Did you have a preference? Is yeah. one parking lot better than the other? What's, we, is there a strategy to parking lot uh, intercourse? So industrial business parks are like 
much easier, more discreet. Um, they're not, there's not a lot of traffic in the area. We tried a movie theater parking lot once. That was not a good idea. Um, funny story. The cops actually like came, <laughs> the cops came for that one. And how did they handle it? They, we weren't in the middle of doing anything. Okay. So we were both in different vehicles at that point. Okay getting ready to leave and then they roll up and then they questioned him and he was getting increasingly like irritated and hostile and I'm I'm talking him down like everybody's like Katie you get out of tickets all the time because your boobs I'm like listen I don't have to show my boobs I just empathize with the cop I talk to them like I'm their mom or like I care about them and that kind of thing and they they respond to that really? they don't respond to hostility very well right. so it's like I talked my I talked Mr. X down and I talked the cops down and I explained calmly what was going on and they advised us to get a hotel next time. Oh, you told you. Just <laughs> yeah. Said, oh, I, we're getting ready to fuck. That's yeah. the thing. It's like cops know they're being lied to most of the time. Right. So I, I throw, I throw the wrench in that and I'm like, I'm honest, just straight out admit. Yeah, I screwed up. This is what happened. I'm not malicious here. Just right. Let it go. When the drug deal wasn't did... prostitution thing, so was, no, I, I never got that exciting. Shoot, so were... <laughs> didn't have a dog to shoot. <laughs> so that, our business is done here. I didn't have a baby to flash grenade. You know, right? you know, it was, well, it's just a simple parking lot tryst. So that was that. Parking lot, huh? Didn't do part. Uh, one of the, my cheating uh, rendezvous was back home in Missouri, and uh, I cheated on my girlfriend with this uh, other lady. At uh, Trail of Te- Tears Park. Oh my god! <laughs> and I didn't at the time. I didn't appreciate the uh, historical significance, right? Wow. You know, she was she was a min- not not native, but she was a minority. I was going to ask if she was a native, okay. right? But uh, it was right there on the, the Trail of Tears, which uh, has a lot of symbolism after tears. the fact. Yeah. Left your own tears. <laughs> That's very poetic, right? The only uh, other place I've uh, oh, oh yeah, that was that was a cheating thing too. Uh, I. Again, what's the same girl? No, different girl. <laughs> Damn, get that ass. Uh, I was I was a monster when I was young. When I discovered pussy, it was like, holy shit, this is fun. Life is over. Right? And uh, we had sex in the park. And this is, in, again, in Missouri. And uh, where I lived at in Missouri, it was a... Uh, uh, Missouri is considered a divided state during the Civil War. Mm. Right? So 50-50. But there was like um, four forts in the town that I lived in. Fort oh my goodness. A, B, C, and D. Okay. Right? But Fort D was the only one still standing, right? And, it was just, uh, and by fort, it's not like like the movie is like a big fort. It's like a fucking, like about the size of this uh, right. office right here. Made of stone, square building, mm-hmm. whatever. But there's a little parking lot. It was this historical site. But we would go have sex there. Me and this black chick who I was cheating on this other black chick with. Nice. Right? So I always appreciated the, the humor of that, of this, you know, times of civil war when, you know, Whites were, were fighting for mm-hmm. you know all these different reasons, including slavery. Mm-hmm. We have come together, and we we lived up to the ideals of Martin Luther King. Of you sure did several sex times. Sex historical several civil times. war. So, out of fort. curiosity, how old were you when you became sexually active? When you discovered pussy, when did your life change? How old did were you? Seventeen, eighteen. That yeah, old? Wow. Yeah, I was late. Okay, that I was makes late. sense. All right. 1718 for pussy, 22 for marijuana. Okay. Very, very late starter on book. That was that. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, where were we at now? So, oh, so you, you're talking, you're telling him mm-hmm. what's going on. You're, so, ha- what's his reaction? He laughed at me. Or, or actually, just, what was the exact thing? I'm cheating on you. That's, is no, that how you I say didn't, it? How I do didn't you say it. So, I took him downstairs to the living room and um he put his book away he's like what's going on i'm like well you know i've been spending a lot of time with mr x did he know that yeah he knew okay. he knew i was going to all these liberty meetups and all this kind of stuff and um, but he thought you were just doing it for political yeah stuff. and i mostly was okay. i mostly was but this was like just a byproduct i didn't go into these did activities. you guys ever mix it up like as you're blowing him like lift up and let me discuss platforms of the libertarian party in between blowjobs absolutely no okay. no that's to, did not happen. I really like Ron, Ron Paul. He's like, ah, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly how it worked. Um, <laughs> so, sorry, Ron, if you're listening. I'm sorry. I had to, I had to... God, I love that guy. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> where was I going? Yeah, I was talking to him, telling him, okay, you know, I've been spending a lot of time with these people. This person in particular, he's like, yeah, I know you guys are close. You guys are friends. I go, we're more than that. And he started laughing. 
and like I'm serious. Like uncomfortable laughing or like he was like, <laughs> like he thought it was it. hilarious. Like he, this is the one thing I appreciate about my, my, my ex-husband. Not everybody has thought I was funny, but he's always thought I was funny. Okay. And he'd laugh at like almost everything I'd say. Even when I wasn't trying to be funny, he would start laughing and he just, he's like, you just have a way. You're just hilarious. And I, I really appreciate about that. I appreciate that about him. Um, but I didn't appreciate it in this instance when I was trying to be serious and telling mm-hmm. him I'm having an affair. I'm cheating on you. I've, blown this guy in the movie theater parking lot where we've taken our kids you know i'm like i'm trying to hammer this home i'm trying to and he's still not buying it he's like he is not an attractive person I'm, i didn't know you were into dudes you know basically i'm like what you're checking him out he's like <laughs> no but he's like he's nothing like me i'm like i know that's right. part of <laughs> that just completely went over this, his head probably this this is kind of why i'm into him because right. he's nothing like you He's like, but physically, he's, he's, I'm like, I know, I know, but it's, I'm not, I'm not shallow and superficial. If somebody's able to capture my mind and imagination and inspire me to do things and motivate me to do things, I don't give a shit if they're four feet tall. You know, that's a magical person right there. That's and I'm going to be into a guy them. thing. That's definitely a guy thing. It's like, oh, what? They don't look as good as me. <laughs> mm-hmm. How long is his dick? How, how long is it? <laughs> I mean, girth. Um, give me, give me where, where, um, so, where is he better than me? Uh, no. No, that's the thing. It's it's. So did it in this conversation, did he finally come to real? Was this a, a, over a couple of days that it, it finally? Did it you was, have to bring him over and blow him in front of him to prove it? Like, look, is this? Actually, no, no, I didn't. <laughs> that would be. <laughs> no, no, I, I. Look at this dick in my mouth. It's not <laughs> yours. It's not yours. Oh so, no, come on, Kate! You're so funny. <laughs> that's a that's a good. You go a really Katie. long way to make this joke, but you know, I I I, I appreciate your commitment to the <laughs> joke right now. You're just <laughs> killing it. Thank you. Uh, no, it was where's the camera? So what's what's funny is we ended up like I go I can't make you believe me, but I go I'm telling you I'm not lying to you about this. I wouldn't lie to you about this. I would not joke about this. I've been like in silent turmoil over it, and he's like. Oh, and then he left. Like, he left the house that night. Okay. And um, I didn't know what he was doing it later. He told me he went to his brother's house and talked about killing himself, and I felt terrible. Yikes. I'm like, this is, yeah, it's, it's not good. So okay. I felt bad about that. I'm glad he went to his brother's house. I'm glad he didn't kill himself. But um, it's like, okay, if you're going to put that much energy into, you know, beating yourself up why couldn't you have put more energy into our relationship right but that's not how people operate right you know so hmm. so where does it go from there is it so is it immediate separation from him no because i couldn't he didn't want to move out and okay. i didn't want to move out well i couldn't move out. i was making not very much money i couldn't afford to live by myself so what he did was he um he took his stuff out of the bedroom and so I would stay in the bedroom and he'd sleep on the couch. And it, it kind of worked out where we never saw each other anyway because, again, we're working opposite schedules. And so I stayed there. I What's stayed. the energy like, though? In the house? Not I mean, you get, good. There had to be some crossing It was not times. good. The kids started, like, we never said anything to the kids, but they, they're they not stupid. They pick up on anything subtle. Right. Like, my, my oldest would ask me, What's going on with Dad? I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, I'm not going to talk to you about it. I'm like, he's just sad right now. He's like, oh, okay. But he didn't, like, my oldest could tell it was, like, something I wasn't going to. Right. Like, I'm not going to lean on my kids for my support here and tell them all the dirty details between me and dad. That's just not how it works. Um, But the kids started acting out in school, like, my oldest, my older two especially. The younger two were just, got three and four at the time. They weren't very old. They didn't really, I think it went over their heads. They might have known something was up, but overall, no, it's just life is normal. And like you get them ready for school, feed them, bathe them, laundry, everything's still, we're still operating in the household as normal. Okay. So. Was there a time that, and again, this is a question I didn't pre-ask you to, for permission for, but did you ever address this directly to the, with the kids? Eventually, like when I was, I wanted to make my moves and make sure I found myself a spot to move out before I told them anything was going to change. Mm-hmm. And so I eventually did find a place to rent that I could afford. And that was when I told them I'm leaving dad. And 
my oldest was not surprised, and my second oldest was distraught. He didn't take it as well. Okay. My younger two are just go with the flow so far, but I'm sure there'll be issues later on that I'll be paying therapy for. So. Right. Conversations to be had. At yeah, least. absolutely. And as questions come up, like my daughter's almost ten now, and she'll she'll ask things. Was there any immediate regrets to tell on him? Like right after that, did you just like, ah, oh, fuck, I should have held off? Or did you like, was there any like, maybe I'm making a mistake? Did you have at this point, are you having any second thoughts whatsoever no. about ending that relationship? No, I was at that point, I w- knew what I wanted. Okay. A hundred percent. And no going back. Okay. Was how I felt at that point. Gotcha. Um, now, this is where we find out how the wife of Mr. X found out. <laughs> yep. And how and how did this go? And then what was the timeline relative to you talking to your husband? What what? So that, that night, out? that night after my husband left, I figured he was just going to go out and then be back after a couple hours. I'm like, okay, well, I need to tell his wife. So I opened up my Facebook Messenger and I sent her a message saying. You're not going to like this, but I've been sleeping with your husband. Frowny face emoji? No. Okay. No emojis at all. Okay. I was I was not a heavy emoji user until recently. Gotcha. So um, now I use the emojis. No, oh, I really like your husband's eggplant. You know that? <laughs> you know what's funny is it was, <laughs> I probably shouldn't even, I'm, I'm just going to say it. I was, it was not, his dick was not a draw for me. It really, really wasn't. Um, I... See, see my reaction as a guy? Like, really? No, it wasn't. It's not it good. Wasn't. The, it wasn't. What the draw for me was the attention. And, uh-huh. like, he was good at playing with my boobs. He was very good at that. Um, he was good at, like, kissing and all the romantic bullshit. He was really good at that, which is what I respond to. Um, the dick performance was not ideal for me. I did not like it. I didn't think it was big enough. I didn't enjoy playing with it. Um but I knew it made him happy, so I would do it. And and that's that's not something I've told many people. Exclusive, so. filter free America listeners. <laughs> exclusive. FFA exclusive. <laughs> oh, when he hears this episode. Um Well he kinda he, he that's not gonna be a surprise to him. He knew that. Okay. He knew he was, that he was he was, a, he was well adjusted. I just lied to myself. I'm like, eh, seven inches. That's good enough. That is good enough. That is, is more than double what this guy had. I want a, I want a ten. I no, want a, I want two you digits. You guys always want more. I want, Use the I don't, one you have. No more than ten, but but ten seems like a good number. I don't know. I like I, double I've, digits. I've been with guys that are like ten. It's uncomfortable, and maybe that's just speaking to my that's, that's experience. Good. I, that's good. I want to. I, I want a little like. Oh, that's pain? dangerous. You want to cause some pain. I just want it to be. I want it to be a little scary. Okay. <laughs> I, I can. Be, you're just, not scared of seven inches. Seven inches is okay. It I'm depends. Like, I'm is literally it, is it a, average is for, it a, for is a it white a, male. Is like I think it's it's like six point nine or some shit like that. Is but is it girthy? Um, is it like a toilet paper tube? It's under toilet paper, slightly less than toilet paper, kind of. That's still really good. Here's the thing: if decent. you if you know the anatomy of your woman down there, and you can move it around the certain. Because the clitoris extends on either side of the labia on the inside. The so what? You, you're, you're hilarious. <laughs> you're hilarious. <laughs> what a, what a, oh, nightstick like extends. cock is what I want. I just want it to be like a night, but, you know, sans the blackness, you know, still want it to be white. I get it. I but get it. 10 inches just seems that good. And that's sufficient to cause some damage, <laughs> make them walk funny the next day. That's all you just want out of life. Like, I get you know, it. I just want somebody to. But if you do that. Other things. If you do other things, it can't just be dick and vagina. It's got to be other things. Right. It's got to be the way you move it around. What is, what, what is this turning into? I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> what is this turning this into? This is gold. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so where were we with that? He's, um, you, you, you're telling the wife. So I told, yeah, I told her. And yes. what was her immediate response? She's like, I knew something was up. Was She's the, like, I knew something was going on. No emojis on two. her end. No emojis. No, no frowny faces. No here. frowny faces. No anger faces. I don't know what they had back then for emoji selection, but I don't think it would have been, you know, the quality she was looking for to communicate to me how 
disgusted and angry with me. She rightfully was. Right. So. So was there a conversation or was that it? It was like, I, this is what I'm doing. And it was like, yeah, I knew something was wrong. And then. She said, I knew something was wrong. And she's like, I am devastated. And she'd been increasingly like um, Mr. X described it as moody and irritable and questioning more. Okay. So she knew something was up with him. And um, did she she lash out at you? Like, mm-hmm. Any blame? Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. She put all of the blame on me. She thought I pursued him hardcore. She thought I was coming after him. And I'm like, that's not how it went down. So it's it's hard to. I've been cheated on, but not in a mar- in a marriage. Okay. And it's it's easy to blame the other woman. And of course, she's got some culpability there. I mean, like you can't just say, "Oh, it was just the other guy." No, he his actions could have been like he could have been like, "No, I don't want to bang this other chick." But not only did he want to bang me, he wanted to leave her for me, and he made no secret about that with me or with her. Okay. And he was brutally honest with her about it, from what he told me. Again, just telling me what you can confirm because mm-hmm. I don't want to, right. you know say anything that's going to hurt her but feelings what, or, or, you know, right. characterize anything that's going on. What can you confirm as far as the, the drama between them? Was it? I didn't get that there was a lot of drama. I thought it was similar to my situation where he just wasn't getting the attention he thought he deserved and needed from a partner. Okay. Was there ever any other contact at least within this immediate time frame between you and her? Did she ever come back and then with questions or... Or no, was there she. Any, like, well, I'm gonna fight you, or no, you know, so. none of that. Um, this is what I always admired about her. She's very mature. She's very graceful. She is like when you think of the stereotypical genteel lady, that's who she is. She's ride or die for your man. Um, she's not. She's not like me, where I'll just like lash out whatever thought pops in my head. She's polished she's intelligent she's she's an amazing strong woman and she's like i'm really devastated and i'm really hurt by this news and like i'm i apologize profusely i'm like but i love him and i want to be with him is what i told her and she's like i know and that was all she told me over messenger wow and that was it did you guys ever meet up in person face to face we met face to face a couple weeks after that okay and how did that go down well it was at like a (laughs) political kind of get together You're damn right it was <laughs> and i was expecting more drama i honestly was but i'd run to who are you voting for faithful men and women <laughs> who are you voting for not the whore party not whores even though we're more fun um so it was it was some kind of meetup i don't remember what the whole point of the whole party was, but there was going to be about 50, 60 people there. It was kind of a big deal. And I was pressing him. I'm like, are you going to sit by me or are you going to sit by her now that this is out? Wow. And he's like, I'll I'll spend half the time with her and half the time with you. I'm like, not cool. I'm not going. I'm, I'm Go glad. fuck yourself. See, that's the guy, that's the guy I thought. Well, this is a solution. This is, you know, cut the baby in half. You know, this is what you do. This is exactly it. And I'm like, no, I'm not cool with that. I'm like, I feel like I'm more important than that. And you should just, you know, oh, basically. That's, God, that's, that's such was, a guy ego thing. Myself, I, you know, it's like, yeah. well, I'm just going to give him a little bit of me. Each one of them. That's so hilarious. That's what they that's, want. That's how our brain works, man. <laughs> that's how right. fucked up and how the world revolves around us type mentality. And maybe not every guy, but. A lot of. A uh, lot. Most of us. You are not alone. Right. You're not alone. Holy you are not the only fuck. man in the world, Joey. You're not. Holy <laughs> fuck, man. Wow. But, so, so what, what's the what's the? Inter- I'm, well, I'm assuming the energy energy between you two is, is negative in this room. But is there is there eye daggers or is there huge eye daggers? She, oh my god! I'd never seen her like. Does she have I'd, friends with her that are? Yeah. She's like whispering in her. That's the whore. Right no, there. she she knows who I was. She okay. knows. Uh, so I get there, and previously to this, the coming out, whatever I call it, um, we'd always gotten along so well. Like we're both pretty congenial welcoming people and this was my first encounter with her after telling her what was going on and i'd never seen her look so angry and so just 
she had malice in her face towards right. me and I, she absolutely was within her right to like have that but i could it was not good and i wanted to get away from her as far as possible and i'm like okay so i was there i made an appearance and then i left i did not stick around all right i did not stick around uh just just so the listeners know and so they can you know mm-hmm. cause i'm sure they're like feeling really empathetic for for her right now the, they should be that and is they should be absolutely she she has recovered n- nicely oh yeah can she's you, can you let people what can what are you comfortable with again i don't want to put too much so, of her business right. out there but but what can, she's what in a better I, place now a much better place um let's i'll sum it up she was in a miserable marriage where she felt like she was never good enough that's what from what I, what I can tell on the outside okay. and now she is remarried to somebody who worships the ground she walks on treats her like a queen she's got two beautiful babies and that's all I can tell from me trying to creep on her on Facebook to see how she's doing. And then what other people have told me, um, he's Mr. Mr. X actually told me about the first baby and that she got mar- remarried really quickly and she's happy. Okay. She's content. She's not as hostile. Like she was kind of hostile during the divorce proceedings when it came to dividing up the stuff. And then she's just stopped caring. And then she just mostly wanted to expedite the divorce and, then he found out she was pregnant, had a baby, and she's got, you know, not that long, not much longer after that, she had another one. Okay. So she's doing her thing. She's, Do you guys ever talk again, either verbally no, or via text or no, whatever? No, nothing. Okay. Nothing since. I wonder if she'll reach out now. She'll, for some reason, this I, I don't, podcast crosses her. I, I don't know. I'd, I'd be happy if it did. Okay. Because I'd want her to know I never wanted bad things for her as weird as that sounds like i wanted her to be you, you, you i wanted a happy ending for her too you know it's like you stumbled on something that i've, I've learned to appreciate or at least recognize it it's like we can do bad stuff but not but appreciate that we're doing something bad and feel bad about it but we still do it with, right with whatever that drop whatever that animalistic desire is or whatever it is it's, it's forcing it, it's, us to over step our you know human it right humanity part and just go for lust or whatever right we can still you can do both you can you absolutely can that's what makes humans so interesting yeah so both parties know Mm -hmm. everything's out there everything's out there uh you're on your own you got your own apartment eventually but not 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 right away not right away not right away was that was that uncomfortable? Like living yeah. with the husband, and mm-hmm. then like you're like, okay, I'm gonna go bang my boyfriend now. Mm-hmm. Pretty uh, much, <laughs> pretty much. Did it ever get to that that passe between you and him, where it was just like, oh, okay, yeah, have fun banging the no. guy that broke up our marriage? No, my ex husband remains. He does not like to hear if I'm dating somebody. He does. He's still not moved on. Hasn't processed it. He did not want to divorce me, but he knew he had to. Is so. he? Is he? Is there a happy thing no. for him? So no, say? he's gained another 50 pounds. Um, he doesn't do much but uh, spend time with the kids, which is good. But mm. I would really like it if he'd start dating again. I want him to be happy. He's, you know, it's like, but then I think about how he was during our relationship. And it's like, he was the best when we started dating. And then once we got married and after the kids came, he was... He was at work, and then he was non-existent. He had enough energy and drive for work, and he put in 100% at his job, and then he came home and wasn't present. I mean, he was on the couch, passed out in front of the TV, and then I'd wake him up and tell him to go to bed, go lay down on the bed so your neck's not like out of whack and that kind of thing. Okay. So back to Mr. X. Yeah. How... After the fallout of, the, of them telling how is your guys just still on the same path? Was there any energy change? Was there anything going on between anything different? After he saw how much it hurt her, mm-hmm. he wanted to go back to her and try uh-huh. to make her feel a little better. He thought like he could make it better for her. And I told him that's not going to work. You're the source of her pain. It's not going to be better for her. Are you telling him that because you just want him and you're trying to make sure that there's both. a problem? Or yeah, was that, it's, it was, was both. Legitimate? Yeah, okay. I thought it was, I'm like, this is a win-win here. I'm like, you're not going to go back to her because you wanted to be with me. And then he's like, well, what about your ex? I'm like, what about him? I go, he's, 
I was so selfish at that point. It was like I didn't think about how much he was hurting because he hit it so well. He was just mostly ignoring me. Right. Like, I couldn't tell the degree of his suffering at all. But that's the thing with a lot of this. It's like nobody considers how their actions affect other people until right. much later. And that's how we learn. Yeah. So did plans change at all? Or are you guys planning to, to, to come live together at I think all? A lot or is of, he still at the point now he's like now torn? And He's torn. He's torn, but he still wants me. Like he wanted me and his wife. His solution would have been yeah. both of you guys. Right. Okay. Always. That's always how guys operate. They would want that it have all. been a possibility? Were no. You, would you be open? Okay. No, no hard pass. Gotcha. Yeah, it was I'm I don't like to share. Okay. I don't Especially like with share. such a tiny dick. <laughs> it's not a, not enough to go around. <laughs> Correct. Correct. And it's I'm just I'm just gonna lay it all out there. He had issues with it functioning most of the time. But not with me. Okay. With her, like it occasionally happened with me, but he could never get it for her without medication. Really? Mm-hmm. You believe that, that wasn't a line? That wasn't another line. I don't think it was because she. That was also something she had mentioned to me. Um, when we were still like before, I told her what was going on. She would mention something like he has health problems, so we're not that intimate. She would admit that to me. Diet, gentlemen. Diet changes everything. Absolutely. You start putting garbage food. Well, once I stopped putting garbage food in my face, mm-hmm. dick worked great. I don't know. Doritos and fucking Taco Bell and shit, that's not good for dick function. Here's here's the thing, though. He eats really clean. Really? He always, like, he when he lost his weight, mm-hmm. um, he went from, like, 400 pounds to, like, 260, and that was all diet, no surgery. So he was eating clean, but he still couldn't perform Interesting. with that for that particular he's got something else going on then but yeah and generally speaking generally speaking i absolutely agree bo in whatever comes from from health and it's it's like that for women too it's like i notice when i'm eating more clean i'm more horny it's like it's it's almost like our bodies are designed to function when they're not being filled with um crap right it's weird how that works right it's probably another conspiracy but um yeah, Twinkies and Ho Ho's and Taco Bell are not good for Ho Ho's and Twinkies. Right. Right. So there should be a t shirt. Mm hmm. Bumper sticker, at you're, least. You're welcome. That's like my only one liner ever. So, so another, fun. another exclusive. There you go. Well, so eventually things get bad between you and Mr. X, right? Correct. So when's the first example of shit's, oh, this is not happiness? He wanted my passwords for my social media accounts and he wanted for, access for, to my phone. Was there anything to prep that? No. To no, he just that. thought it was something normal that normal couples do. Really? Mm-hmm. Yep. And how does he, oh, hey, by the way, I need to collect those passwords. <laughs> no, he's all like, well, would you like access to my account? Do you want to post as me and that kind of stuff? Wouldn't that be fun? I'm like, no, I'm not really interested in that. But, like, it was funny because, if, like, if he did leave his phone around laying out and it was open, I would go on it and I'd post something stupid, like, as him. Right. Like, oh, I can't wait to make out with so-and-so later on. But I didn't ever, like, look through his messages. And I didn't ever, like, I didn't feel the need to. I thought it would be funny, like, if he had a status update that lots of people saw, if, you know, that was clearly not in character for him. I thought that would be funny because we right. both like to troll. That's what we did. Right. Like, send each other memes and troll the fuck out of people and make them mad. And it was fun. It was a good time. <laughs> it was, you guys are it miserable was, people. <laughs> we were. We were. <laughs> but it was like, it was just so fun to go on our local candidate's Facebook page and accuse them of bullshit. It was, and it wasn't always bullshit. It was legitimate complaints. But then we, you know. Well, any guy who's, who's cheating or got something to hide, if this, if they're smart and mm-hmm. the economics allow for it, you got to have a burner phone. <laughs> You got this is this is this is your your cheating phone, and then you got your regular phone that you just leave out and everything's oh. fine. It's just pictures of puppies and happiness <laughs> in there. We're just. We're but just that's so... I my, if I look, I was told my girl if I ever cheat on you, I just want to have two phones. Just know <laughs> that I'll tell you that. Good to know. I hope everybody's <laughs> paying attention to that. If they've got two phones, they so, got two holes. Right. I'm sure it was the same way back in time too. It's just different, you know, like maybe two but two ham radios or something. Maybe. You know? Obviously. It's my cheating radio. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so th- that was the first sign. That and then how did, his, how did his uh, reaction, like, nah, I don't want you to have my 
stuff. He started that made it worse. Like he I, I think the reason the real reason he asked me was because he didn't trust me. And the fact that I was hesitant to let him into my social media stuff and see my messages was even more like, oh, she's doing something. I'm like, well, I wasn't at the time, but now somebody else is probably going to look more attractive to me if they're not in my business like this. Right. Um, I told him, you're going to drive me away if you keep this shit up. I told him that many times, but right. kept going back. It's a common response. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I say that as being somebody who's been untrusting mm-hmm. and, and here's the thing we're talking about that is like people they're saying it's a good sign that your your significant other is cheating mm-hmm. if they're suspicious and i don't believe that i think no. i think that's i think that it's in his case that is true in some right. cases but also in my case as i've been cheated on horribly right you know in relations that i was actually trying to do good and right. not cheating right and it's uh, called karma yeah <laughs> that too but that burned me in my brain. So I, I am worried, you know, I've been worried and like, like the relationship I'm now dope. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I'm going to say you got a good. Right. But, uh, I've been in relationships where I was nervous about that happening, coming off of another relationship that was, you know, where I got cheated on. Mm-hmm. So that was where I would be, you know, like, are you, are you sure you're not cheating on me? Whatever. And, uh, so I think it can work both ways. Absolutely. But girls don't, all the magazines I read, all girls think that it's like, oh, he must be cheating on you if he thinks that they're... No, sometimes dudes are just fucked up too. Yeah, it's. I would say definitely after that experience, it's it's probably permanently altered my ability to trust another, another person in that way. Weird. And I wasn't innocent either, but... Right. None of us are innocent. No. Completely. I mean, we all fuck-ups just very degrees of fuck-ups so where to progress from there i mean how did it, i'm sure there's a, a ramping up like he would he would let it go for a little while and then just do what he knew i liked and res- like what i would respond to well which was you know jokes and having fun and just keeping it light and he would play his guitar for me and that kind of thing and warm me back up and then he would bring it up again okay. when he thought you know, all we're all, we're good. Get done playing his rendition of Secret Agent Man. <laughs> no, no, a lot. Oh, of, by the way, a lot of James Taylor. I like James really? Taylor's, okay. but I couldn't listen to it for a while. And now I'm like, I'm at the point where I'm like, okay, I think I'm healed up because I can listen to this again. Okay. So, but yeah. Did it ever? What What was the next progression? Next layer? I mean, I can see the that... next layer was. Um, he knew I liked romantic gestures and okay. I'm sure he thought it was romantic to be waiting outside my work when I got done several times when I didn't know he was going to be there. I'm sure he thought it was romantic to show up at my house, um, in my backyard. Uninvited. Uninvited. Okay. Um, yeah, these are, these are definitely signs. Yeah. But I didn't look at it that way. I was pretty naive. I think the once at work thing. Yeah. One time. One you time. show up with some flowers yeah. around a holiday or birthday right. or something like right. that. Here's, here's something I did. I, I uh, had a girlfriend who, why was she mad at me? It wasn't a cheating thing. It was something else. It's just she didn't like who you were anymore. Something. <laughs> I was probably, just probably, oh, I, I, and it sounds like excuse making, but I was working excessive amount of hours at a poor paying job and I was probably a little curt or mean, whatever. Okay. But Impatient. I, yeah. But uh, I, I went to her job and I made like this little sign. That I wore around my neck to say I made my girlfriend mad <laughs> and her job. And she was a manager of a very, uh, not a nice restaurant, but a very popular kind of healthy fast food place. Gotcha. I don't want to say the name of that either because it's going to know who she is. But um, that was, you know, one time thing. I didn't just go to her job every single time and, and all that stuff. I was trying to be cute. And right. To make up. And that is, that is cute. Yeah. But uh, you do it multiple times. Like there's a Well, problem. and there was no sign and there were never any flowers, but he brought me like, um, brought me food that he made and he knew that I liked certain foods and he would bring them to me. And of, I'm not going to lie. Food works on me. That's, <laughs> I, I had on my Tinder profile, you know, what I liked. I like to be fed. I like to be fucked and I like to be talked to. That's really that's really it. Right. I don't need a lot more than that. That talking part ruins the alliteration, but Sometimes. Whatever. Okay, well, is there a word that means talking that starts with an F? I don't think... I couldn't think of one. Not yet. No. <laughs> okay. 
So that's. There was ever a time that you uh, like, hey, you gotta stop just showing up here. I got mad at him. He showed up at my uh, one of the grocery stores I worked at, and he came through my line. I'm like, you don't do this. I I have my coworkers here. There are customers here. You don't do this. I'm not okay with it. And well, that's you're invading my space. That's called honeymooning. You're not supposed to. Your significant other is not supposed to come through your checkout line. Oh my I used God. to work at a grocery store. Well, that's right, a big thing, right? Because I'm worried you're gonna not scan something. Right. Or something. Yeah. Yeah. The little sweetheart deals. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but. I would have probably charged him double if he had anything, <laughs> but he came through the line with nothing, just the the food he made and wanted to give me. Right. And like, could this have waited? Right. I'm working. I was so mad. I was so mad. I'm like, people. That's worse than someone. Somebody tries to fucking write a check. Oh like, oh God. fuck, this guy's bringing <laughs> food to his girlfriend. <laughs> I got to get home. Let me hurry the fuck up, buddy. Right. Get this shit over with. And he expected me to, like hug him and kiss him and stuff there too, and he was mad that I didn't. I'm like, listen, no, you were in the wrong here. Holy no. fuck! I man. was, I was so mad. I was so mad. I, and then of course I block him on Facebook because I was mad at him, and that made him mad, and we just triggered each other like that constantly. Okay. Because I didn't respond how he wanted me to. Wow. Which was to basically bend over and do whatever he wanted. So what would you say was like the the maximum amount of fucking creepy shit that he did prior to you guys separating? Because that's going to come, spoiler alert, this doesn't work out, happy ending here. <laughs> um, what was the, the most, I guess egregious act that he did was it that or was there anything that what was i maybe the deciding factor of like hey you know what i need to you know maybe consider not being with him anymore i don't think there was one particular act that stands out i like i i think it was just the repeated offenses that added up and i didn't know i was keeping score but i was okay you know just like you do this so many times i'm fucking done okay now in our pre-conversation, you told me that you stepped out on him. I did. Right? I did. Which is another layer. Mm-hmm. Of the... Because we would break up and get back together. Break up, get back together. And this was you never, break. You never lived together, right? No, we never did. Okay. I don't think I could have. He's a hoarder. I can't I can't do it. Right. I can't. Like gross hoarder or just like, like organized hoarder? Uh, no, gross hoarder. Ooh. Not with food. Uh-huh. Like the kitchen area was always good because he's a good cook and he likes to have a good space to work in whatever um but everywhere else in the house you could barely walk and it was just crap i'm like this is making me crazy i can't even spend time with you in your house crap for like resale value nothing like that or just i think some it was part of it was that and part of it was just going through the junk in the house and he blames it on his ex-wife but i'm like well when your ex-wife was living here it was not like this Right. So nice try. Gotcha. Like you, you have a lot of stuff. Get it out of here. And he couldn't do that. He didn't want to. So. So that was what that was the. You wanted to go find somebody who's a little bit more organized. Is that? I wanted to find somebody who drove me less crazy. Okay. And I didn't even want a relationship. I just wanted a. You know. Okay. I just wanted to be fucked really well. <laughs> and. <laughs> I wanted to feel it. Um. So. <laughs> I went and sought the attention of someone I knew he hated. This is where you just I was you're, you're I was out for blood. malicious woman. I was and I wasn't before and I was kind of like this is kind of like not like me to do this shit, but it's going to be like me now if he's going to accuse me of being a whore and cheating on him, I'm going to be the biggest whore there ever was. So those Fuck words it. did come, is that what was going? He, did he, he get was, to that level. He was it wasn't a, just was like a, nicely asking you to get your into your Facebook no, or whatever. No, he was accusing me of carrying on multiple conversations with multiple guys because of how we started up. Like we started up like with me saying some very sexually explicit stuff as a joke to him and it just progressed from there. Um, but I, I wasn't doing anything at the time. I'm like, yeah, I know a lot of, we have a lot of the same friends. We know a lot of the same people. We've run in the same circles. I know these people. It doesn't mean I'm fucking them. Right. Weird. Um, but then I started, okay. <laughs> then I started, and and your your <laughs> solution was to go pick the worst possible person, right? And I thought he would respond to. I thought that this would make him be so repulsed by me that he would leave me alone. These that are was... how lifetime specials start, right? Here. This is how <laughs> this is how they get started, shit, right? Shit. So I sought out this guy, and I knew he was a huge man whore, and I knew he could give it to me good, and that was. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> 
So this is happening. I'm how doing you, this. Was it by reputation? Is that how it was? was it we flirted. Time? We'd flirted here and there, and but I knew. I knew um, he had done one of my friends. <laughs> So I'm like, okay, this is reliable, Dick. Okay, you went through like an Angie's List review, like this guy. Really we should, we more. totally should. No, screw those Tinder profiles. Give me your, give me your Yelp. <laughs> <laughs> so his Yelp review is he makes me Yelp. <laughs> How many Yelps do you think you got out of that session? <laughs> the minute it went inside, All I was right. yelping <laughs> in pleasure. Five stars will fuck, fuck again. Basically. <laughs> Basically, would recommend to a friend. Would you recommend this dick to a friend? Yes. Here, here you go. That's how I found out about it. So service was excellent. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, so I thought that that would have that doing that would have been enough. Now, to... now, did you do this and just like, hey, guess what I just did? How did what was um, the uh, how did he know and how did he? I yeah, I I told him. <laughs> I told him. He... Why are you smiling so <laughs> pleased and satisfied? <laughs> There's something you need to tell me, isn't it? So so there are like muscle memory and like when you think of certain people, they cause certain reactions in your body. Okay. That's, that's what's happening right now. Um, <laughs> so after I did this with this guy I knew he hated, I thought, this is my way out. He's so repulsed by this guy. He's not going to want to touch me again after, I fu- after he finds out he fucked me sideways, you know, how many t- different times. Yeah. So. This is my way out. I'm Plus now it's gonna laid. Be like, fucking you is going to be like throwing a fucking hot dog down a, down a hallway. <laughs> right. So, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, yeah, I thought that was my way out, and I thought this was like, this relationship is done. I'm just going to not be in a relationship right now. I got to d- deal with my divorce and all this stuff, and I don't have time for his drama, right? I, I'm done. Right. I want, I want, I was, in my mind, I was emotionally done with the relationship. I'm like, I can't stay with this person. So, um, can I ask you about the divorce part? Yeah. Um, how, how did that play out as far as like, did you just basically, cause you, you were the one that kind of, yeah, you know, torpedoed this. Yeah, I did. did. Did you just like, you know, whatever you want or was there any kind of like a legal, was it am, is the word, what's the word? Amicable. Am, yeah. Thank um, you. it was not amicable, but he got everything he wanted because I didn't want to fight him on anything okay. and there's no child support either way. Okay. Um, be even up the time with the kids as much as possible if there's things that the kids need or want to do or that kind of thing i just here you go because bob bob was in his court to use it to be vindictive absolutely it was so he he was did he be the bigger man in this uh yeah i would say so and anatomically speaking yeah was he the bigger man also yes okay yes (laughs) yep so that wasn't a problem i can i can tell you if i was getting regular dick if i was feeling like I mattered more to him than somebody to clean up and watch the kids for him and cook and that kind of thing. I don't think I would have even stepped out. Okay. But I'd gotten to that point where I felt like I was not even a blip on the radar, except for make sure the house is clean and the kids are fed. So back to Mr. X, mm-hmm. what is his reaction? Or what did you tell me? I don't know. Did you tell me if he, how he found out about... Was- about your you stepping out oh, on him? Oh, n- I told him. Oh, you told I him. I told him. And 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 face to face? No, oh. Facebook Messenger. <laughs> you had to use the <laughs> I had eggplant. To, I did not. Emoji then, right? I did not. I was not a big emoji user God until until a few years ago. So what was his reaction? I knew something was going on between you two. No, right? There wasn't anything going on. There's nothing more going on between me and that guy than there is between the him and the twenty other chicks that he's simultaneously banging he's like you need simultaneously to holy shit this guy this guy's a champ he is he is he's drowning in pussy Take a number. all the time exactly ding, ding, exactly next. and that's fine that's his thing good good for him um right. you need to have sir whoever you are <laughs> please come on the show let's discuss your uh i'll give his contact information sweet <laughs> so um yeah that's I told him, and then I blocked him, and then he made a fake account and got a hold of me. And he's got like twenty fake accounts on Facebook. Really? Yes. Some of them get shut down and reported, so he just makes another one. Right. Mm-hmm. I do not have that much time. I, I don't do either. And plus, I'm an adult. I, right. I, f- I feel like if you need that many fakes, like I can get, I get a burner account on Facebook because. Well, there's some people who make them for trolling specifically. Right. And that way, if I can say whatever I want to say and get kicked off, but but there's another thing when you're like, that's a, yeah, that's what a lot of those were for. Like I used to do a lot of different Twitter accounts, but it Mm -hmm. was just to, to tweet as different people. Okay. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah. I ran out. I had like one that was called uh, the Drone Ranger. Oh my god, that's cute. And it was just about it was just my making political statements about you know, my disgust in U.S. drone policy. Because mm-hmm. it is, it's disgusting. Yeah. But back to the cheating. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right? I have got the moral high ground. <laughs> At least I don't bomb brown kids with a remote control helicopter. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I might step on a lot of people's dicks, but right. here's the thing. Well, you know no one you're dies. Hitting. You know no one dies. You're not, you're not throwing your pussy in a wedding, you know, just randomly. Correct. Although that would probably be enjoyable, too. I'm not going to lie. Be the kind of wedding I'd look for. <laughs> pussy for everybody. Um, so... Where are we at now? He, you're telling him this stuff. He, mm-hmm. he, he know. Of course, he knows about it because yeah. he's so perceptive. Um, how does it play out? He's mad at me for a time, and then um, we give each other some space. Probably about a week or two goes by. I start thinking about the good times with him. Okay. I start, and this, I think, this kind of happens with everybody. Like the when you separate from somebody, in lot. you don't think about their. Yeah, that's, right. right. You don't Remember think that about time their the cops came and interrupted our fellatio. <laughs> no, it was intercourse that time. Oh, okay. It was intercourse. My bad. But uh, we think about the good qualities and we don't think about what led to the separation. And that's where I was at. And so then I would get weak and come back to him, beg him to take me back. I'm so sorry. Over and over again, this happened. I mean, I didn't always bang Were somebody Were you always else. the one asking to come back? Yes. I was. So you, you've lost, you lost position in your mm-hmm. in the power dynamic. I sure did, that. sure did. But he had no problem reobtaining the power. You know. Right. Yeah. Did, was it after that cheating of cheating on him of mm-hmm. Mr. X? Because there was a time where he got physical to a degree, mm-hmm. not slapping you around, right. but restraining you and, right. and so forth. Is what we that talked was, about. Did, was that after that? That cheat? was after that. Okay. Because I think I think he developed a, a degree of distrust and resentment towards me and hostility towards me that wasn't there before. Okay. But now that I knew I was capable of being the whore he accused me of being, and yeah. This is the the part of the of your story that is like the the tangent that's that's really interesting to me because if anyone hasn't figured out yet, he's a, a libertarian figurehead. Correct. And they're really big on liberty and and freedom and, freedom and, and personal and, responsibility and right. um, letting people do as they please and right. not trying to get in their business. Not and, trying to get the codes to their social media right. and not trying to restrain them and hold them up against the wall. So mm-hmm. that, and I, and and again, I, I know I have a lot of libertarian listeners, and I don't I don't mean to make you guys sound bad, but today's the day I'm picking on you a little bit. Um, I seem like I know a lot of libertarian people. Well, not. That's a lot. I don't know. I've I've met multiple libertarian people that right. are present themselves in one way, but they're less than libertarian. The ideals of libertarian right. behind closed doors, mm-hmm. or or you know, when and they're I, not on you know, quote unquote stage or whatever. Right. You know, I don't mean that as I'm not trying to indicate a comedian or anything like that. I'm just saying on stage is in presenting themselves to the world right. differently than what they are. And that's I don't know. There's a there's a, a weird psychosis within libertarianism. That not not saying all you guys and gals are, but I don't think out there. It, I don't think it's exclusive to libertarianism. It's just more pronounced because of what we're trying to communicate to other people about what we want. Oh, I definitely don't think it's exclusive yeah, to them. No. I, I just think it's the 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 irony and contrast right. of the, of who their party ideology, what it is. Exactly. It's, exactly. It's like why aren't you more consistent here? Like, like when it's a, like a Republican or Democrat, yeah. you know, enslave somebody, well, that kind of makes sense. <laughs> it's part of their love thing. it so much. They love licking the boots a right? lot. They love it. Yes, tell me what to do. Yeah, <laughs> Be in my business. Exactly. As, as long as I'm safe, I don't care what you do to me. There's Republicans losing their fucking mind right now. <laughs> no, we're not. <sighs> All right. Whatever. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what, was there a, a final crescendo of of wanting to get away from him the mr x like i'm okay we're this is done we're this is completely done completely done um that that whole cycle of me and him breaking up getting back together that took over a year over that was over a year of that before i even looked at anybody else and it's like i really wanted to make it work i wanted to I wanted to come back to him and make it right and prove to him I was a good person. But then I find I 
I had friends who were telling me, I had my family telling me he is not a good person. This is, you know, my, they would tell me this is my opinion. You do what you want, but this is what I'm looking at and I don't like it. Were their opinions based on actions exclusive uh, between your, you and him mm-hmm. or did they know something outside of No, it was the, just what I, based, based on what I would say, like I would just nonchalantly describe a situation and they would be horrified. Okay. Like much like your reaction when I'm like, yeah, he's waiting for me outside work and he's doing this and he's doing that. And none of that is okay. And I didn't know that at the time. This is like my second relationship in my life. I didn't know. It, I didn't it, it's know. weird how our vision changed. And I'm sure there's some people who are stronger or more astute or, or able right. to define it. Because I've, same thing, you know, and or I've actually been the person that has been protected. Mm-hmm. You know, like, oh, he's a piece of shit. <laughs> no, he's not. He's great. I've been the, that guy. Yeah. And, but I've also been the one like, no, no, no. She's fucking fantastic. She's right. awesome. I mean, it was just three dicks in her. It's fine. <laughs> right. I had one. I, I, I got engaged once, like officially engaged. Bought the ring, put the ring on her. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, went over to her house uh, one day. I, why was I going over to her house? Oh, oh, because what I was been doing was I, um, I worked in downtown Minneapolis. Ugh. So I would drive my car from my place, park it at her parking lot, then jump on the bus because it was right on the edge of downtown. Gotcha. That way I didn't have to pay for parking. Right. And for some reason, I, you know, usually I just would just go and do it because, you know, I had pre approval and I knew she was there. Mm-hmm. And I would just leave. I think I had to pee or whatever. I had to get something. I went to her house. So I went and knocked on the, the door. She lived with her mom in mm-hmm. the apartment and they let me in. Because they'd seen you. Yeah. Like, yeah. oh, yeah, come on in. Yeah. So I, go, go the, I went to the bedroom. Soon she's in there sleeping, she's in there with some other dude. Asleep, ex-boyfriend. Not fucking. Always, always but, the ex. you know, she told me, oh, we didn't do it. We just slept together in the bed. Oh, okay. And she like, I was like, dude, we're engaged. And she took the ring off and threw it on the floor. And I picked it up and took it. You know, I got the ring back at least. So that was good. But uh, I, I still try to make the relationship work after that. I was like, Oof. yeah, we do a lot of crazy things when we think we're in love and this, this is the direction well, maybe we're she supposed was to go just, in. They were just sharing a bed together. You know, that's really how, it, how it is when you're. She, ex-boyfriend comes over she wanted him to be comfortable after he got done railing her right it's really nice exactly it's thoughtful not good so if it's bad dude she threw it on the ring and she rolled back over and went back to sleep that was it was bad dude that was bad wow <laughs> i'm so glad i have all this moral high ground to judge her that's right. so great that's what same better. same <laughs> you know? right. and that's that's all part of maturity and wisdom you know at the time i was felt like oh god i'm such a like, how could she do this to mm-hmm. me? And I'm like, well, you've done just the same and yeah. worse. So it's just, you're just being as human as she's being. Correct. You know, she failed and you failed. and It's just finding that person you want to fail with over and over and over again. <laughs> right. That's the secret to happiness is, <laughs> is, is failure together. Correct. <laughs> Correct it is. So when you, you finally just say, you know what, this is, you came to a realization of, of Mr. X is not the one. Yeah, I did. Okay. It took me a while to get there, but I, I got there. And what, how did you get to that? What was the, I guess, because the, there was, if you were breaking up and getting back together, there was mm-hmm. lots of those back and forth. Right. But what was the final one to him? The final, and I'm not talking about before where we're going to go into where you had to have your friends uh, talk to him. But uh, what was the last attempt of a civil, like, I'm down here? Um, it was when he came to my apartment and he said, we should, we should make this work, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't want to. I'm not attracted to you anymore. I'm not seeing, I'm, I started seeing somebody else. Okay. And um, I was really excited about that guy. It just seemed like he had his shit together and treated me really well. Um, that doesn't have, it happen, have a happy ending either. But uh, <laughs> at the time, he was sufficient distraction to make me realize if I was so in love with this person and if i thought he was right for me then why would i have even entertained the thought of another person i'm like here i go again am i just destined to just keep cheating on whoever i'm with is this who i am now and i was talking to my friends about that and they're so it wasn't just one thing that led me to decide this wasn't it it was just a series of him disrespecting my boundaries and making me feel like i didn't have a right to be my own person and Mm -hmm didn't have a right to privacy and didn't have a right to just live life without him having to be in every little aspect of it and knowing where I was, what I was doing, who I was with, these kind of things. I just, so he came over to my apartment and said, we're going to talk about it. And he refused to leave. Hmm. And we got physical 
um, started like pushing each other around, yelling at each other and accusing the other one of being a psycho and this kind of thing. And then this is where I, I amazed myself with my ability to manipulate somebody that I thought was just way smarter than I was. I, I realized he's not going to go. He's not going to leave. He's not going to leave willingly. He won't. He's stubborn. He's more stubborn than I am. I'm not stubborn. I don't think I am. But I I just shut off my animosity. I shut off my hostility towards him, and, I'm, and I just gave him a big hug. I'm like, I'm so sorry I'm acting this way. What was what did you think this is this is interesting? What, what I'm if... so sorry I'm acting this way. I'm like, can you forgive me? I'm like, what I really need for you is to just hold me like you used to and this kind of thing. And I seduced him and then he left willingly. And Wow. Yeah. And I had him convinced that I was in love with him again. Did you have to bang him? I did have to bang him. Okay. And this was like a common occurrence in our relationship. This is what I knew wasn't right like it never sat right with me like in order to get my way and to feel heard i had to fuck him okay he wouldn't listen to a damn thing i had to say unless my clothes were off and he was attempting to be inside me so oh okay yeah it's like i'm done with this and he he would say no that's not it that's not it okay it was it was a I wouldn't. I, I, I don't. Just going over in my head. I don't know how to interpret that. What was that? What? What? I wonder what the reasoning or process is, or I what. I he never needs understood in that. it. What's I never. Thing? I. I knew he needed to feel validated as a man. I'm like, we all need to feel validated as humans. We right. all need to make sure we're feeling heard and valued and appreciated and attractive sure. and desirable to the. And that was this thing. He did not feel like I was attracted to him anymore, and I really wasn't at that point. And it wasn't that's because not what of, he, that doesn't. At least what I'm how I'm seeing it or hearing it, it's like. That's not what he's doing. It's basically he just was jerking off in you. Basically. You know? Like yes, I just need literally, to do a sexual... Basically. Like, okay, can you just go do that on your own? Because he wanted my validation. He wanted okay. me to want him to do that. Okay. And so I would let him think that. And I would act accordingly. So now's where it gets kind of dark, his behaviors. Mm-hmm. Because then things that were... He was doing things that were at the... You know, when you done before, it was kind of, right. ah, my cute little boyfriend. Right. And then it starts getting weird. Mm -hmm. Tell me about what he started doing as far as the, the stalking stuff. So he started sitting in my parking lot at where I worked. Okay. And he started sitting, I didn't know this, but he was sitting in my parking lot at my apartment as well. And we say sitting like at your parking lot at work because he's like pulling his car up where your car is at. No. Waiting for no. Your, or from a distance. And, from a distance. And did you... At oftentimes was he there and you didn't know it? Right. Okay. Yep. And I had friends tell me this because I'd had them keep an eye out for me because I didn't feel safe anymore. After that, I did not feel safe. When he refused to leave, that was, I guess you could call that the turning point. Did you get to a point where you're, you, you look out there and you see him in the parking lot after you've known, you've been alerted to this? After, yeah, then I did. Okay. Then I did. And do you, how do you deal with that? Do you, have you gone out? Did you go out? to his vehicle or I'm assuming he was in his vehicle and like address it, the situation there. Like, I, hey, what the I fuck didn't. are you doing? If I had any balls, I would have. But again, I wanted to avoid him. So I would just leave and pretend I didn't see him. And I would let my friends know that he was there. And they just kept track for me because I'm really terrible at like documenting things and keeping track for later reference when I probably should have because I did, I did go to file a restraining order against him. Were you getting phone calls or messages or anything? Um, any verbal contact at I all, got, or is it I got just phone calls while I was at you? work. I got phone calls while he, while I was at working from him, and then I, I would see that it was him calling. I wouldn't answer my work phone. He called not my phone, but he called my where I was working, the place of business. Okay. I'm like, that's that's drawing a line. And ask for you, kind of thing. And yeah, he would ask for me, and I'm like, no, no. And then um, my coworker didn't know, so she would answer it and be like, oh, somebody's on the phone for me. I'm like, hang up, don't answer. Like, you see this name, don't answer it, because okay. we had caller ID at work. So I'm like, he's, this is over the line. It's too much. Okay. But. Anything else that he was doing? Did he, you said he came to your house. Yeah. Uh, did he break into your house? No. Did he, anything like that? No. Mm -mm. Any threats? Anything of, like, you better get back with me. Or I'm, no. I'm hit you with my little penis. You know, something like that. <laughs> no. No. Nothing like that. So that's so you the restraining order didn't work though, right? No, I didn't end up following through with oh, it. Oh, okay. Because at that point, 
if he looked up the public record and he would see his name. I figured somebody would see it because I think the I think restraining orders restraining orders are a matter of public record. Yes, it's a court so order thing. So. I would I was worried because I didn't want him to like lose his political like all that stuff. I didn't want anything bad on his record. Right. I still wanted to kind of protect him that way. I'm like, well, this is just me he's affecting. It's nobody else. He shouldn't have to lo- lose out on opportunity because the, this is on his record. So not only did I have not have enough money, I could have gotten enough money for it, but I didn't want to. That's good. How much is, do you remember roughly what it cost? I think it was like 150 bucks for the one I wanted to file. I had to get a restraining order against a girlfriend one time. Oh, man. Yeah, dude. She was doing something, coming to my job. She vandalized a car. She just loved you. Yeah. <laughs> She, dude, she knocked out, had this 1984 uh, Cadillac Fleetwood uh, Brom, Broham, however you pronounce it. And uh, she knocked out all the windows in it except the windshield. So four door windows and the back glass of the car. Wow. And then, and then poured uh, a can of black eyed peas in the gas tank. <laughs> what the fuck? I, I guess it was just convenient. Maybe it was in the car. <laughs> I never really got that. You know, but you know, like, yeah, I had to get the gas tank removed and steam power washed out. Oh my god, but I had to get a restraining. But I don't remember having to pay money. I thought it was just like you maybe if it was, it was one of them you don't have to, but it's not as like. And then why would you be charged for that? Like, oh, I can't it's, afford it's, to it's be a, safe. It's a filing <laughs> fee, it's a court filing Fuck fee. That, dude. That's, that's Minnesota, horrible, dude. that's that's Minnesota, and especially because there's lots of women, you know, and it happens well, yeah. to men too, but there's yeah. lots of women who've been murdered with. Yeah, because it's just a piece of paper. And, and like at the end of the day, that's what I told myself. I'm like, it's a piece of paper. If I'm really threatened, I do have friends with guns. That's fucking horrible, though. Why would you charge somebody? You... This is government for you. Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, Him too. So your solution was, as, as we've already hinted at, mm-hmm. you have friends who, have... Uh, who are armed. Yep. And that's a, a very good thing. Mm-hmm. And this is it a good is... example. So you talked to them and sent them out to motivate him to leave yes, you alone? Yes, and it worked. Okay. It worked uh, for the most part. Okay. So. After that, it's been smooth sailing as far as you Aside and Aside from that one date that I was telling you about earlier, like the one that came over and then he ended up being in the parking lot waiting for oh, him. Oh, okay. Tell us that story now. Okay, that's a, that's, I forgot. I knew I was forgetting something. That's a, this is your first official date after yeah, it's, officially it's of, ending it one of my first official dates this is the first date i had um after i finally broke down and created a tinder account and mm-hmm. this guy was driving from apple valley to come take me out to dinner or whatever um and probably other tinder things. should uh, should offer like protective order like a like a joint <laughs> thing for their app like as soon as you get done doing your protective order like okay now it's time for your profile right, right what are you into oh my god for sure <laughs> disclaimers disclaimers right? um but nice enough guy he came over to my place to pick me up and um he got to my parking lot and i didn't know because i live like in a place where there's like 30 cars out front i don't know which one's his so i'm i figured he'd come down to my door when he was ready to pick me up and right. and he was running a little late i didn't think anything of it and then like we we're supposed to meet like six thirty, and it's like almost seven. And then I hear a knock on my door, and it's him. Okay. I'm like, "What the hell?" We said six thirty. He's like, "Um." <laughs> so this guy was in the parking lot and asked if I was gonna take you out. I'm like, "Excuse me." <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, "Yeah, this this short fat dude. I mean, <laughs> super fucking weird. He just comes up to me and like looks me in the eye and shakes my hand. It's like." Yeah, are you taking out Katie tonight? And he's like, um, yeah, we're gonna go have dinner, blah, blah, blah. Who are who the fuck are you? Right. <laughs> and he's like, Well, I'm her boyfriend, and all of this just kind of messed with this guy's head a bit. And did he did he say that he make a threat to him at all? No threats, just wanted to know who he was and who he was seeing and what he was doing. And kind of like like a a subtle suggestion, like okay, you gonna go take her out, huh? Mm. I don't, I don't, I don't know if he did. It's possible. Okay, but the guy didn't indicate no, it. No, this did. this guy I did not match up with for his intellect and his perception, <laughs> and his ability to you know look at a threat, you know. Right. But um, yeah, that did, was did, that did was you, did you bang up. him that night? I sure did. Okay. I sure did. Fair enough. Oh, he earned <laughs> it at that point. I mean, he, he made it through <laughs> the ex boyfriend screening process. Right? So, he sure it. did. <laughs> like, yeah, I have my creepy ex boyfriend meet everybody I'm about to date <laughs> just to see if they can get through it. Get through it. 
Because if he senses something wrong with you. (laughs) I trust this man more than anything. (laughs) There must be something bad with you. God. No, so I never saw that guy again after that. And that was that was that the one that was like, okay, time to get my arm friends to have the conversation. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. That gotcha. was kind of spurred that on a little more. But now we're you are you're good. You're free from him. Now I am, yeah. I mean, emotional impact aside, you're Yeah. There's no more stalking. It's there's some... no more stalking. There's no more random showing up at wherever I'm working. But what also helped um stop that him showing up to where I worked was I started driving for a living (laughs) so it's harder to stalk somebody down when you don't know where they are exactly (laughs) it's like they can be anywhere in a hundred much worse on gas too it's like yeah i can't afford to be a stalker now chase her down driving all over the city i mean feasibly he could put like a tracker on my vehicle maybe yes (laughs) if he has i don't know about it i haven't seen him but wow yeah it's a little harder to chase me down and offer me food (laughs) right All right, so let's wrap it up with this now. Okay. Um, and I, I had a two-part thing, but I think we kind of already covered the husband part of it, mm-hmm. right? I we think so. We know where he's at. So. I think so. And, uh, you know, we don't want to, you know, make anything worse for him and no, he's wish a, him the best, I assume. He's, but, he's, a, he's a good dad, and he, if he gets properly motivated to lose weight and love life again, I, I want good things for him. I want good things for him that because he he deserves that right but he wants he has to want it for himself is that's what right, i tell dude. myself go you know lose some weight for yourself for, yeah. for happiness and for your mm-hmm. kids and then go fucking slay puss bro exactly slay it and he could right because that was like when i first met him on our blind date i didn't want a relationship back then either but god damn he was skilled really he was so good i hope he hears that because that's that's like <sighs> This is the simple-minded men. That's great. <laughs> I have nothing else in life going for me, but I can fucking tear up a pussy. Yes. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I'll, I'll make him a Tinder profile saying exactly that. Yeah, maybe start start feeding him some fu- fucking, you know, some prospects Here's Here's the you know? problem. Anytime I say anything positive and complimentary towards him, he thinks it means I want to get back with him. Oh, uh, okay. I don't. Okay. I don't. All right. Yeah. Oversee that and then go out there and do what you do. You mm-hmm. you were designed to fuck and slay puss. <laughs> Fucking destroy puss. You'll, you'll babysit, I'm assuming. Yeah, right? I definitely will. There definitely. You go. Line them up two or three at a I time. I will. I will. All right. So in summation of the of the episode here, uh, what's, looking back, what's your points of reflection? What are you, uh, have you have you changed your approach to to dating? Uh, uh, what's what's changed with you now? What have you learned? What's your what's your drops of wisdom? I am so much less judgmental now. Okay. Um, I have a lot more empathy for people who find themselves in questionable scenarios and in situations with questionable people because I know everybody's got a good side to them and everybody's got a bad side to them. And it's, I treat everybody as if the the good side of them is all I see and all I know, because for most people that is, that's the face we put on for other people. But as soon as I find out somebody's had an affair or they were into drugs or they were in jail or something even worse happened to them, it's different if they're not learning from that and trying to better themselves. Like I have a harder time like having empathy for them. If I see somebody just being a piece of shit consistently, not learning any lessons, I I. I'm like, they must have been really hurt at some point to turn into that. But overall, I have a lot more love for people. Okay. That's my default is like, okay, understanding patience with somebody. Unless I'm in traffic, then no. no right. It's all, the all bets you. are off. Like, I wish fuck death you. on everyone. Exactly. I see you cut me off, you piece of shit. As soon as we make that exit, <laughs> I love you, bro. I love you. No. But um, yeah, it's... I have a lot more patience for people in their situations. And um, when it comes to dating, I... I have a harder time putting my walls down. Okay. A lot harder time. I'm not vulnerable as I was. I'm I'm a little worried that I'm not going to get super excited, happy in love with someone again. I'll enjoy people's company. Like I can have a go out and have a good time with a group of people. I can go out and have a good time with a person, but as far as establishing a true connection with someone, I'm a little worried I'm not able to anymore. Okay. Happy now? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Mostly overall, I'd say I'm happy. And like you say, I'm doing better than I deserve. Right. So I love what I do for a job. I have a great relationship with my kids. There's a lot of 
people in my life I'm excited to learn more about. Um, I'm checking mm. stuff off my bucket list. Right. So I'm, I'm good. That's good. I'm good. good. Are you still hooking up with the guy on Yelp that has a superior? <laughs> no, no, dick bad. Game. No. Um, so in an effort to reconcile with Paul, I did some bad shit to that guy. So we are no longer close, but I don't want anything bad for him either. Okay. I don't. I really don't. I. I'm not, but I am seeing somebody right now. It's going good so far. I'm not letting myself get too excited and too attached right away, though. So okay. I'm just cautious. I'm very cautious right now. That's, we I, should all be. I hope for the best and expect the worst, which is you're not supposed to expect the worst, but. We should all be cautious. Because if, if nothing else that we've learned from this episode, <laughs> all human beings are horrible, miserable fucking people. We are. We're all fallible, but there's also, I would say, we all have a redeeming quality about us. Yeah. So. Most people. It's just harder to find. Yeah. Like, even the most atrocious pieces of shit I've been with, I can find a redeeming quality in them. Love them where they're at, let them go. Right. Sometimes it's just simply their, their dick game. You're a horrible monster of a person. <laughs> but give me that dick. Take. Please tear it up. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for being so open and honest. This is a very insightful episode. There's things to laugh at. There's lessons to be learned. So I, I appreciate well, your open and honesty. About I hope. Thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad I was able to come in here and treat this as a confessional. I guess. Um, That'd be one thousand dollars, please. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. You'll. Yeah. I will. I will Venmo to that to you as soon as I find out what that is. Right. So. <laughs> Thank All you right. so much. You're welcome. Well, well, well. There you go. How was that for an episode, right? Was that a good one? I think it was a good one. I enjoyed having the conversation. Lots of little dirty, sexy talk. Lots of penis references. And still a very deep uh, uh, kind of exploration, if you will, into the psyche of, of human beings, right? Our flaws, our strengths, our weaknesses, and how they all uh, kind of circle around, uh, you know, relationships and love and sex and lust. All of that in one little package that you can swallow and poop out like a weeble wobble. Boom! See, I look, I had to bring it back. I had to bring it back because I talked about it in the beginning, whatever. I was a strange child. I, please forgive me. I'm strange now, but whatever. But, yeah, that's the episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, big thanks to quote-unquote uh, wink wink Claire. Uh, for coming in, having the conversation with us and uh, being so open and honest about that kind of subject matter. It's not easy to talk about. And I feel that she did a great job and uh, I really appreciate that. Uh, also, she's been a very good supporter of the podcast. So I appreciate that as well, too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, anything else I need to, to include? Uh, I, again, I, I've mentioned it in the episode. Uh, there's two uh, victims in the story. Uh, uh, the husband and the wife who were both cheated on. And if you've ever listened to this episode and you get to this part of the episode, uh, please know that this was never, uh, never my intent to make you feel bad or embarrass you in any kind of way. Uh, again, that's why I was very selective about questions that I asked and tried to be as, you know, aloof as possible as far as, you know, anything that could identify you. But just know it was a conversation that, Oh God, I don't know how to say it nicely. You know, it's something bad that happened to you and I feel bad that that happened to you. And I hope obviously, you know, at least from what uh, Claire told us, the, the wife in the question uh, is doing very well and seems to be very happy. So that's awesome. I hope that you, you continue to be happy. Uh, the gentleman in, in question, um, maybe not as happy, but God dog, man. Uh, uh, if, if anything, man, just shake it off, man. Hate to use a beyond save reference. Just shake it off. Um, but shake it off, bro. Get out there, man. Go out there and slay the puss. Do whatever you got to do to get the stink of sadness, the stink of depression off of you, right? You're a human being. You deserve happiness. You deserve love, right? I'm giving you right now, I'm giving you a an audio hug through the air and, and letting you know, man, the the world is what you make of it, man. Just don't 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 spend your life hiding in your house or doing stuff like that. Get out there, you know, work on your health, work on everything, man. Be happy. Uh, do it for yourself. Do it for your kids. Do whatever. But I wish you the very best, too. And again, definitely uh, not meant to embarrass you in any way. Uh, the other guy in the picture, eh, as far as what I, I'm understanding, uh, I don't really care. Um, Let's see. Anything else? That's it. Rate and review the podcast. We got that covered. Guys, I love you guys. You guys, the listeners. Uh, you guys have been amazing. Over the last month, 
It's been a, an amazing amount of growth. And yes, uh, a lot of that has to do with me because I'm awesome. No, a lot of that has to do with the great guests that I have. I have some very great guests who are willing to come in, have conversations with me and be as open as they do. But also it has a lot to do with you. You taking a chance on a podcast uh, from an uh, essentially unknown nobody comedian and you taking time to listen a long foreign ep- uh, podcast at that, which isn't is a, is a commitment of time. And I truly, truly appreciate that. Every time you guys share episodes, every time you guys reference the show, uh, tag the show and something, post pictures of, you know, whatever related to the show, uh, comment on the Facebook page on posts that I make there. Uh, you guys are definitely helping me uh, kind of move my little dream along, right? And uh, my dream of making this a, a successful podcast, you are definitely helping. You're definitely doing your part. Please keep doing that. And I'm greatly appreciative of everything that you do. And uh, welcome to all the new listeners, because uh, it's it's surprising the amount of growth that we're getting right now. Uh, it's very humbling. So thank you guys very much. All right, I'm going to get out of here. As always, please uh, take time to uh, uh, spade and neuter your pets and children. Uh, keep seeking the truth. Uh, I love you guys. Uh, do something nice for yourself. Today's your day. Go do something nice for yourself, whatever it takes. If it, uh, I don't know, you know, something sexual. You know, you had a, a sexual urge that you need to satisfy, you know? You know, it's, you know flip a couple bucks to a hardworking uh, sex worker and uh, fulfill that dream. Whatever it takes to get the dream fulfilled, you go do that. I love you guys. Bye-bye.